Good morning, everybody. It's lovely to see you here today in our church for this celebration of the Holy Eucharist on the 18th Sunday after Trinity. Welcome to those visiting us here today, those who've returned after a little absence, um, and those who are following us on our live streaming channel, and those who are catching up with us on YouTube. It's lovely to be able to share with you our worship this morning. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Almighty and merciful God, who in the days of old gave to this land the benediction of thy holy church, withdraw not, we pray, your favor from us, but so correct what is amiss and supply what is lacking, that we may more and more bring forth fruit to thy glory, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please take up your red hymn books and turn to the hymn number 529. We sing, Thy hand, O God, has guided. Please take up your Green Book of Common Prayer. We turn to page 201. We say together the Collect for Purity. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. 
Amen. Let us sit or kneel for our confession. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ says. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy on us, and write these your laws in our hearts. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to intercede for us in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. Let us then confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace. Father, you come to meet us when we return to you. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Jesus, you died on the cross for our sins. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Holy Spirit, you give us life and peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned in thought and word and deed and in what we have left undone. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may walk in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, has mercy on you, pardons and delivers you from all your sins, confirms and strengthens you in all goodness, and keeps you in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We stand to say the Gloria. Glory to God in the highest and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Collect for the 18th Sunday after Trinity. Almighty and everlasting God, increase in us your gift of faith, that, forsaking what lies behind, we may run the way of your commandments and win the crown of everlasting joy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please be seated for our readings and the psalm. <clears throat> A reading from the book of Esther, chapter 7, begin beginning at verse 1. So the king and Haman went into feast with Queen Esther, on the second day, as they were drinking wine, the king again said to Esther, What is your petition, Queen Esther? It shall be granted to you. And what is your request? Even to the half of my kingdom it shall be fulfilled. Then Queen Esther answered, If I have won your favour, O king, and if it please, pleases the king, let my life be given me. That is my petition, and the lives of my people that is my request. For we have been sold, I and my people, to be destroyed, to be killed, and to be annihilated. If we had been sold merely as slaves, men and women, I would have held my peace. But no enemy can compensate for this damage to the king. Then King Ahasuerus said to Queen Esther, Who is he, and where is he? Who has presumed to do this? Esther said. 
a foe and enemy, this wicked Haman. Then Haman was terrified before the king and the queen. Then Herbona, one of the eunuchs in attendance on the king, said, Look, the very gallows that Haman has prepared for Mordecai, whose word saved the king, stands at Haman's house, 50 cubits high. And the king said, Hang him on that. So they hanged Haman on the gallows that he had prepared for Mordecai. Then the anger of the king abated. Mordecai recorded these things and sent letters to all the Jews who were in all the provinces of King Ahasuerus, both near and far, enjoining them that they should keep the 14th day of the month Adar and also the 15th day of the same month, year by year, as the days on which the Jews gained relief from their enemies and as the month that had been turned for them from sorrow into gladness and from mourning into a holiday, that they should make them days of feasting and gladness, days for sending gifts of food to one another and presents to the poor. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm appointed for today is number 124. You'll find this on page 744 in the back of your green Book of Common Prayer. That's Psalm 124, page 744. Uh, Tom will read for us the first half of each verse, and we respond following the red dot. Page 744. If the Lord himself had not been on our side, now may Israel say, If the Lord had not been on our side, when enemies rose up against us, then would they have swallowed us alive, when their anger burned against us. Then would the waters have overwhelmed us, and the torrent gone over our soul. Over our soul would have swept to the raging tumultus. But blessed be the Lord, who has not given us over to be prey for their teeth. Our soul has escaped as a bird from the snare of the fowler. The snare is broken, and we are delivered. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Who has made heaven and earth. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Epistle of James, chapter 5, beginning at verse 13. Are any among you suffering? They should pray. Are any cheerful? They should sing songs of praise. Are any among you sick? They should call for the elders of the church and have them pray over them, anointing them with oil in the name of the Lord. The prayer of faith will save the sick and the Lord will raise them up, and anyone who has committed sins will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to one another, and pray for one another, so that you may be healed. The prayer of the righteous is powerful and effective. Elijah was a human being like us, and he prayed fervently that it might not rain. And for three years and six months, it did not rain on the earth. Then he prayed again, and the heaven gave rain, and the earth yielded its harvest. My brothers and sisters, if any among you wanders from the truth and is brought back by another, you should know that whoever brings back a sinner from wandering will save the sinner's soul from death and will cover a multitude of sins. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We take up our red hymn book again and turn to the hymn number 400. We sing, O now, O Father, mindful of the love.
Hear the Gospel of our Saviour Christ according to St. Mark, chapter six, begin, uh, chapter 9, beginning at verse 38. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. John said to Jesus, Teacher, we saw someone casting out demons in your name, and we tried to stop him, because he was not following us. But Jesus said, Do not stop him, for no one who does a deed of power in my name will be able soon afterwards to speak evil of me. Whoever is not against us is for us. For truly I tell you, whoever gives you a cup of water to drink because you bear the name of Christ will by no means lose the reward. If any of you put a stumbling block before one of these little ones who believe in me, and would, it would be better for you if a great millstone were hung around your neck and you were thrown into the sea, for your hand causes you to stumble, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life maimed than to have two hands and go into hell to the unquenchable fire. And if your foot causes you to stumble, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life lame than to have two feet and be thrown into hell. And if your eye causes you to stumble, tear it out. It is better for you to enter the kingdom of God with one eye than to have two eyes and be thrown into hell where their worm never dies and the fire is never quenched. For everyone will be salted with fire. Salt is good, but if salt has lost its saltiness, how can you season it? Have salt in yourself and be at peace with one another. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father and of the Son, of the Holy Spirit. Please be seated. Be careful what you pray for. Be careful what you pray for. Elijah, he was a human being like us. And he prayed fervently that it might not rain. Three and a half years. Three and a half years it didn't rain. I was talking to some friends in, in um, South America the other day. And they were complaining about the endless sunshine. Uh, <laughs> can we have a little bit of that, please? Yeah, just a little bit. Not too much. Not too much. You can have some of that, right? But not too much. No, that hurricane that went through, that was too much. Too much. Beware what you pray for. And yet, James tells us in his epistle, if any of you are suffering or sick or in need then ask for prayer yeah ask for prayer there is a very big difference between these two kinds of petition yeah uh, Elijah was there uh, I, as I recall the story uh, at the altar with the prophets of Baal um, and uh, he was um, uh, is that the right story Anyway, there was a, a chastisement of the king and he was saying to um, uh, them uh, that the God that I worship is capable of stopping uh, and that's what happened for three years and six months. Um, actually, you have to think for yourself, what was the reason for the prayer? Where was he coming from? And what was the point of it? What was the purpose of it? When we listen to James and he says, if you are suffering, if you are sick, if you are in need, then ask the members of the church to come and pray over you, anointing you with oil in the name of the Lord. The prayer of faith will save the sick. The Lord will raise them up. And anyone who has committed sins will be forgiven. Yeah? Confess your sins to one another, pray for one another, so that you might be healed. Confess your sins, so that you might be healed. Ah. This is the way the early Christian church in Ireland understood the way in which we function, the way in which we operate, the way in which we um, engage with our faith, that they understood that if you had sins then you needed healing 
healing, not chastisement and judgment. So when we go to the book of Esther, we very rarely go to the book of Esther. So this is a wonderful occasion. I'm only sad that actually the gospel reading was not the one about the beheading of John because they're the same. They're the same story. Yeah? Just remember the beheading of John. Yeah? Remember what it says. Um, Herod held a party on his birthday um, and his daughter danced for him. He said to her, um, and I quote you from the, from the passage from Esther, what is your petition? It shall be granted to you. What is your request? Even to the half of my kingdom it shall be fulfilled. Those were the words of Herod as well as the king in the time of Esther. This um, comparison, this engagement between two passages of scripture is really important for us. When we connect with some part of scripture and we are familiar with other parts of scripture, they come to mind and we can then make comparison between them and make connections and learn something by making the contrast. We can learn about the nature of that. So, as I say, I'm really upset that we've got the wrong gospel reading today. I shall have to talk to the people who did this and get them to change it. Or I could do that myself, actually. I could change it arbitrarily and you wouldn't know. <laughs> this story of Queen Esther is very powerful. Just think in your mind what was going on with King Herod and John the Baptist. Just recall that because it's easier to recall. You know that story. Um, what is your request? My request is that you save the people from being killed. You save my people from being killed because they are going to be tortured and murdered and that is not going to look good on you, O king. Okay, who's going to do this? Him, the one who's standing next to you. Right? Fortunately for the Jews and for Queen Esther, the king recognizes the problem um, and he challenges Haman who was the one who was going to do this, uh, who had the gallows set up for Mordecai, another Jew uh, of that same uh, community. In the story of King Herod, uh, the John was in prison because he had challenged Herod that he had made an unlawful marriage. Yeah? An unlawful marriage. I remember speaking about this before. The way in which that maps out Herod says to his daughter, whatever you want, and he go she goes to her mother, the queen, who says, I want his head. So uh, Herod being nervous of public opinion, okay, and not really wanting to do this, but he did it anyway, he had him beheaded. Mordecai wasn't strung up and hung on the gallows uh, in Haman's house. Instead, it was Haman that was strung up. Yeah? So when we look at the two stories, we can make, because they start the same, and then they move off in different directions. And so we can look at one and, and see what teaching there is in there, what the story needs to tell us about Herod and John the Baptist, or about Esther and Mordecai and the people of Israel. Yeah. And then the people are told to celebrate the feast on this day and the next day in order to remember that they were saved. With John the Baptist we have the feast of his beheading and he wasn't saved. And actually there is a, um, a, a drawing of the line in the sand with John the Baptist. Yeah. Drawing of a line in the sand, okay, a way of being is no longer going to be um, uh, uh, allowed for. There's a new way of being which is the one that's going to be allowed for. And this is where James comes in because James is telling everybody that in the old days Elijah when he was praying these are the kinds of things that happened. 
But when you pray, when you pray, because you are people of faith and you trust in God, just watch the miracles pour down from heaven. Just watch them. Yeah, when you pray. What are you praying for? You're praying that people will be restored in their relationship with God. You're praying for that. If they are ill, suffering, this is not good for their relationship with God. You know what it's like to suffer. You know what it feels like. You know that we sense ourselves to be distanced from God somehow in our pain and suffering. That's not actually true, but that's what we feel. And when we pray for each other, we remind ourselves and everybody else that we are in a close relationship with God and that that close relationship heals us, draws us back in to a more fulsome relationship with God. The prayer of faith. The prayer of faith. How much do we trust God? How much do we trust God to answer our prayer? How much do we trust God to cause us to want to pray? for them. How much do we trust God to lead us to the point where when we say be healed they are just like the apostles and the people of the early church. Yeah? Even the shadow even the shadow touched people and it healed them. That's how much faith does yeah? This is what faith does. Faith, trusting in God and listening to God and making the step of faith that says, God, you are going to be healed by God right now. It's not me, it's God doing it through me. That is where the healing comes from. That is why when we are cheerful, we sing songs of praise. Because God can do this. And we can do this. So, what is your petition, Queen Esther? My petition is that you will understand what is going on here. It's wrong. It has to stop. Um, and this is what I want to be done. I want my people not to be hurt, not to be punished, not to be harmed. Dare we ask? Dare we ask that the war in Ukraine and the war in Israel and Gaza and Lebanon Stop right now because it is evil. What is happening in these places is wrong. Absolutely wrong. And must stop. How many people are praying for it to stop and how strong is their faith that it must stop. It must stop right now let us pray Amen As people who believe in God, we now stand to declare our faith on page 205 in our Green Book of Common Prayer, the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, 
God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us sit or kneel for our prayers. Call upon your name, O Lord, incline your ear to our prayer. Lord, you call your church to be purified for your service. Set our wills on your kingdom alone. Help the church to be a place where faith trusts you so much that its prayers are always answered because its prayers are always right. Help us to cease our trivial squabbles, the differences that separate us, the ways in which we hurt each other, and help us to focus your church on proclaiming your glory. Lord, hear us. Lord, you graciously hear us. Lord, you call the nations to be at peace with one another. Unite them all in the pursuit of goodwill, harmony, peace, and sustenance, that we may offer to those in need the resources of our own country when they have none. We pray for the leaders of the nations, those who make these decisions to cease from turning to war and conflict to further their selfish ends. We pray for all who are engaged in war that they may know what is the right thing to do and have faith and courage to do it. May none prosper at the expense of others. Lord, hear us. Lord, you graciously hear us. Lord, you call us to live justly. Strengthen all who uphold order and peace and bring to account any that cause harm to others. We pray for those in positions of judgment, the justice system, those who police our nations and keep the peace, that they all may be focused on bringing relief to those who suffer and justice to those who have done wrong. Turn us from the evil we do and the good we do not do. Lord, hear us. Lord, you graciously hear us. Lord, you call us to care for all those who are sick. With our prayers, we ask you to anoint them with your Holy Spirit, the oil of healing, that through our prayers, people may be restored to wholeness, to life. We give thanks for those who offer care through medical intervention 
the hospices and those who bring medication to those in need. Raise up all those who suffer that they may sing your praises. Lord, hear us. Lord, you graciously hear us. Lord, your call brings us home. Draw to yourself all who have died. We pray for those who mourn the passing of loved ones, whether recently or remembering their anniversary at this time. We pray for those whose grief is raw, and particularly we pray for anyone who will die today unprepared. Restore all to your eternal life and love. Lord, hear us. Lord, you graciously hear us. And so we gather together our personal prayers, the prayers we carry in our hearts and minds, the prayers we have been asked to pray. the prayers of those who have visited this church in the past week, and the prayers of those who could find no words with which to pray. And we offer them to God. Merciful Father, accept these our prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Please, would you stand? Peace to you from God, our Heavenly Father. Peace to you from his Son, Jesus Christ, who is our peace. Peace to you from the Holy Spirit, the life giver. The peace of the triune God, be always with you. Let us offer one another a sign of peace. During the singing of our next hymn, the stewards will move among you to gather in your donations for the work of this church. Uh, also, we are holding a retiring collection for the uh, Southwest Counseling Service. So at the end of the service, there's a basket at the back for your donations for that particular charitable work. We turn to our red hymn book, to the hymn number 290. We sing, Walking in the Garden.
If it is your custom in your home church to receive the sacrament, you are most welcome to do so here today, irrespective of your tradition. We use gluten-free bread. Please turn to page 208 in your Green Book of Common Prayer, but keep a tab in page 207. We go back to that prayer later. Be present. Be present, Lord Jesus Christ, our risen High Priest. Make yourself known in the breaking of bread. Amen. Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us celebrate the feast. The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Father, almighty and ever-living God, at all times and in all places, it is right to give you thanks and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord. You have revealed your glory as the glory of your Son and of the Holy Spirit, three persons equal in majesty, undivided in splendor, yet one Lord, one God, ever to be worshipped and adored. And so, with all your people, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed are you, Father, the creator and sustainer of all things. You made us in your own image. Male and female, you created us. Even when we turned away from you, you never ceased to care for us. But in your love and mercy, you freed us from the slavery of sin, giving your only begotten Son to become man and suffer death on the cross to redeem us. He made there the one complete and all-sufficient sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. He instituted and in his holy gospel commanded us to continue a perpetual memory of his precious death until he comes again. On the night he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper he took the cup, and when he had given thanks to you, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this, as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Therefore, Father, with this bread and this cup, we do as Christ your Son commanded. We remember his passion and death, we celebrate his resurrection and ascension, and we look for the coming of his kingdom. Accept through him, our great High Priest, this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts, grant by the power of the life-giving Spirit, that we may be made one in your holy church and partakers of the body and blood of your Son, that he may dwell in us and we in him. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, Almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. The bread which we break is a sharing in the body of Christ. We, being many, are one body, for we all share in the one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us peace. Draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood which he shed for you. Remember that he died for you, and feed on him in your hearts, by faith, with thanksgiving. We return to page 207 and say together the prayer of humble access. We do not presume to come to this, your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord, whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us, for gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your Son, Jesus Christ, to drink his <coughs> We may clean by his body, but our souls washed through his precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. The body and blood of Christ are given for you.
All praise and thanks, O Christ, for this sacred banquet, in which by faith we receive you. The memory of your passion is renewed, our lives are filled with grace, and a pledge of future glory given to feast at that table where you reign with all your saints forever. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Please take up your red hymn book and turn to the hymn number 244. We stand to sing, There is a green hill far away. Before we conclude our worship, I invite you to sit down for some notices. <clears throat> um, first of all, to uh, say, those of you who are not aware, um, uh, in this last week we have had our church clock uh, reinstated uh, in all its glory. It's been restored and a new drive mechanism has been um, uh, installed. So if you go outside and look up, you'll find a beautiful clock face and it will keep time. It will keep time, which the older one didn't do. So that would be lovely. And, and we're very grateful to the um, property subcommittee uh, and particularly to uh, Loretta and all who assisted her in the project. Uh, we very much appreciate that. The confirmation class continues on Thursday at 5 p.m. on the 3rd and the 10th of October and the confirmation service will be on Sunday the 13th of October here in church at 11 a.m. The bishop will be here to conduct that service. Uh, our harvest service is next Sunday on the 6th of October. Uh, harvest decoration will take place on the Saturday from 2 p.m. From 2 p.m. on Saturday 
uh, donations of produce are welcome if you want to deliver to the church uh, on Saturday afternoon. Uh, others uh, can, or you wish to yourself decorate some of the church, you'll be most welcome to do so. Um, next uh, Friday is uh, the first Friday of October, so it is the open house at the rectory, Cake and Conversation, from 2 till 5. So please do come along any time between 2 and 5 um, and join us for uh, a nice cup of tea. I know my wife has been busily um, deciding what cakes she will bake for you. So do please come along because they're always absolutely awesome. Um, for those of you who haven't been to our church for a little while, we have some new bookmarks over in the prayer corner. Um, they are featuring our stained glass windows. Uh, very nice. Uh, two euros each or the full set of 11 for 20. So please do have a look if you would like to avail of those uh, mementos of your visit here and finally to say those who are visiting us you're most welcome to stay afterwards for tea coffee and cake at the back of church we'd love the chance to talk with you would you please stand for the, oh I'm sorry one final thing yes the retiring collection will be for the Southwest Counseling Service a basket at the back of church should you wish to donate for that charity now please stand for the final blessing. God the Holy Trinity make you strong in faith and love, defend you on every side and guide you in truth and peace. And so the blessing, the peace of God which passes all understanding will keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit is with you and will remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen.